In his History of the Atomic Bomb, Richard Rhodes says that the men in this picture are looking at a speck of matter that God had not welcomed into creation. Almost all of the atoms that make up our world, including you and me, are primordial. They were here when the Earth was formed. In this picture, Burris Cunningham and Lewis Werner are looking at something fundamentally different. In the early 1900s, physicists discovered that atoms were not the unchanging building blocks of the universe. A few decades later, Enrico Fermi hypothesized that not only could we transmute atoms from one to another, but that under the right conditions we could create new types of atoms that had not existed before. For well over a century, the periodic table ended at element 92, uranium. As World War II loomed in the early 1940s, it became clear that the isotope uranium-235 could be used to build a devastatingly powerful bomb. However, separating out enough uranium-235 from naturally occurring uranium would require an enormous industrial effort. Niels Bohr commented that you would have to turn the entire United States into a factory. The possibility of creating a new type of atom with similar properties to uranium-235, but without the baggage of being mixed with other isotopes, offered a potential shortcut to the atomic bomb. Now, racing to beat the Germans to the bomb, the leaders of the US program charged 30-year-old chemist Glenn Seaborg with the task of creating this new element at scale. Seaborg hired 40 scientists to work at the Met Lab in Chicago, including Cunningham and Warner. While he couldn't tell them what they'd be working on, Seaborg told his recruits that no matter what you do with the rest of your life, nothing will be as important to the future of the world as your work on this project right now. In the summer of 1942, the team bombarded a uranium sample in the Berkeley cyclotron with neutrons. Based on research Seaborg's group had done back in 1940, it was known that a small portion of the irradiated uranium would undergo beta decay twice, transmuting into a new element with 94 protons. The sample was transported to Chicago on July 27, 1942, where Cunningham and Warner chemically separated out the new element using cerium and lanthium carriers. On August 20th, the day this picture was taken, a metallic pinkish substance precipitated out of their hydrofluoric acid solution, making this the first time that humans had ever seen element 94. Following the pattern of naming elements after newly discovered planets, another scientist on the team, Edwin McMillan, proposed that the new element be named after the new planet, Pluto. They first considered calling the element plutium, but ultimately Seaborg decided that plutonium sounded a bit better. The scientists crowded around in the tiny room 405 in the Met Lab in Chicago, taking turns looking at this brand new speck of matter that they had brought into existence. Within a couple years, they had created enough plutonium to build a bomb, and the first plutonium bomb was tested in New Mexico in the summer of 1945, releasing plutonium-239 into the atmosphere and fundamentally changing the composition of our planet. Plutonium is now part of our world with enough release from nuclear testing for every human, including you and me, to have at least a few atoms in our bodies.